whilst we've got one challenge in the, in the country, that's unemployment, we've only got two challenges in business. The one is finance and the other one is marketing. If you fix finance and marketing, you fix everything else. It's as simple as that. Uh, because everything else comes from fixing those two issues. You need the marketing up front to ensure that you've got the option of bringing on a client. Once you've got that right, you need to manage the money. The more you get successful at the marketing and the finance, the easier it is to, to scale and grow any business. And probably no one better to talk about this than, again, one of our action coaches, Jenny Critchfield, uh, based in Johannesburg. Jenny has got a background in marketing across a range of different businesses, um, has been MD of very big corporate uh, companies, joined us and still runs a marketing agency on the side and really um, has the ability to take what is sometimes a complex issue for people and make it quite simple and really impart some, some really vital elements that you can go take and apply to your business in this changing dynamic environment. So Jenny, thank you for joining us today and really looking forward to making the seemingly complex thing a little bit more simple for everybody else. Thanks so much, Harry. I hope I can do that. Um, marketing is not as simple as everyone thinks it is, um, but hopefully we can do that. So thank you very much. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Jenny Critchfield. And um, basically, I've been asked today to talk about marketing, the lifeblood of your business. Sorry, I just want to do something here quickly. All right. So moving on, um, I'm just going to introduce myself so that you've got a little bit of a better idea um, about who I am. Well, very much it's family first for me. Um, I have two beautiful daughters, age 23 and 26, Kayla and Bailey, who I'm extremely proud of. Um, in my leisure time, I love to potter in the garden. I love to read. I like to take my rescue dogs um, for a walk or spend time down in Cape Town. We've got a beautiful family home in Hart Bay um, with an incredible view and the wine there um, hopefully comes from Tokazani. <laughs> Not so, but hopefully next time. Um, and I also love to spend time in the bush um, because I believe it's really good for the soul. So that's a little bit about me. In terms of my career and my background, um, I spent most of my corporate career in media. I started off at Prime Media Broadcasting, working in sales and marketing, as Harry mentioned, across all four stations in the Prime Media stable. So that includes 702, 947, High Fault Stereo, KFM, and 567 Cape Talk in Cape Town. Um, and I was there for just over 20 years and enjoyed every moment of it. I must admit, I love the radio industry. It's dynamic, it's exciting, and it's ever changing. I left Prime Media um, Broadcasting per se in 2008 and took up a position as a CEO of a company named Cinemark, which specialized in cinema sales. And I was there for two years. And some of the perks of that job included attending the Cannes Lion Film Festival in the south of France every year which was absolutely surreal, um, absolutely amazing. Um, however, sadly, a board directive um, issued, um, what made us incorporate the business into Stakinicor, and I then moved over to Stakinicor and headed up their sales team for about a year. But I found it really difficult to fit into the culture there, and that's when I actually made the decision to leave corporate after 22 years with Prime Media and register my own company. So it basically forced me out of it, um, but it was a good thing. So I registered my own company called InSync Media, which is uh, the marketing agency that Harry referred to in 2011. And um, I was a big fan of Justin Timberlake at the time. So for any of you that can remember the band InSync, that's literally why I named my business InSync. Um, and it's been going ever since. It essentially focuses on people development, it aligns sales and marketing with company strategy, and it optimizes performance levels. That's what we try and do. There are various divisions within um, the business as well that I work across. So the first one is recruitment. Um, interesting to hear your perspective on it, Deborah. that I've been through all the, the highs and lows of recruitment, I must be honest. Um, but I work mostly with media sales and media sales teams because that's my area of expertise. So I seem to have mastered something there. Um, I do a lot of consulting, coaching, and management support uh, as well, mostly in media. I've got an academy which handles um, sales, uh, mostly sales and, and leadership in terms of training. And then I also run new business programs for 
some of the media sales teams in terms of driving new business, mostly working with small to medium sized businesses, um, which is where my Action Coach franchise experience comes in very, very useful. So Action Coach, I actually acquired in 2012, um, and I've absolutely loved being part of being part of the family. Um, my biggest reward, I think, is seeing businesses grow, whether it be through their advertising and marketing endeavors or purely through helping them run an efficient and, and effective business. I've also just recently um, become a shareholder in another company called Talk Media, which is a radio specialist agency um, which works across all media, or all, sorry, all radio, both in South Africa and Africa. So busy, busy, busy life I have. Um, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Um, I have always lived by the statement by Aristotle. It's one thing that has got me through these many entrepreneurial adventures in the past 10 years. Um, and I don't believe, I just don't believe in giving up. I persevere through everything, through good times and bad times. And ultimately either I win or I learn. Um, and I've had many, many lessons, I must say, in, over the last 10 years. So let's have a look, talking about marketing, let's have a look just um, some sort of perspective on some of the challenges that entrepreneurs are facing in our country and around the world at the moment. I think overall market, the overall market in South Africa for business, particularly small to medium sized businesses during 20 and 21 has been extremely difficult due to COVID. These past two years have really tested our resilience, our endurance, um, there's been huge challenges and those companies that make it through this time and come out on the other side are surely going to have everything they need to keep going for years to come. But at Action Coach, we understand how difficult business has been in the past few years. And whether you were one of those businesses that was able to stay open, um, or whether you had to close your doors, either way, I think things have been very difficult, I'm sure. And after all, this was something we could never have predicted. And we've all had to adapt and change how we do things to fit into this new world. So SBP um, is an, an independent private sector development and research company. And they recently did some research on the impact of COVID on small business. And they found that COVID has triggered hardship across the world, especially for small business, which we all know. Um, SMEs in South Africa represent more than 98% of, of businesses and employ between 50 and 60% of our country's workforce. So they are a critical engine of the economy. And what the study is actually showing and projecting is that they estimate approximately 100,000 small businesses will have to close their doors as a result of the impact on COVID. Now that's actually terrifying and will have a huge impact on the economy going forward. So it's up to all of us as business owners to do whatever we can to stay in business and to stay relevant to our market. The bi-local trend is also really accelerating around the world. And again, it's important, first and foremost, that you're speaking to your market but, and that you're relevant to them and that your brand is known, but they must know that you are local. Um, the Accenture study found that 56% of consumers are buying more locally sourced products and about 84% of them are saying that they plan to continue to do so in the long term. So if you are a locally based business, Please tell your consumers or tell your prospects that. Um, research is also showing that SMEs are finding it a real challenge to not only access the right markets at the moment, but also to connect with potential buyers during these times because a lot of the businesses are still working from home. So another real threat is that a lot of small businesses are overly dependent on a small number of clients. And this is very high risk. In fact, a lot of the businesses that I've worked with, this seems to be a problem where they've actually got a handful of clients They've relied on them um, to get them through this time. And if one or two of them don't, don't last, then you lose half your business. So it's a very, very high risk. So for that reason alone, it's now more important than ever for you to broaden your marketing and to reach new customers that can replace those that might fall off. So why do we say that marketing is the lifeblood of your business? Well, as a business owner, Marketing is the lifeblood of a company because it gives entrepreneurs a platform to share how they can solve client problems with their products or services. And good marketing will connect your brand with the prospects that they need, that need it most. So marketing is really, really important because without it, you can offer the best products or you can have the most amazing service. But if no one knows your company exists, you'll have no sales. And if you don't have any sales, you don't have a business. 
So ultimately, the customer's perception of your business or brand or product is your reality. And we mustn't forget that. It's not about what we think our business stands for. It's about what our customer's perception of our business is. And all things being equal, um, people will do business with and refer, refer business to those people that they know, they like, and they trust. So it's really important that your prospective clients know who you are as a business, they can associate with you, and they trust your brand. This takes consistent and ongoing effort. It's not an easy thing. And that is why marketing is the foundation of the success and the survival of your business. Not only does marketing build brand awareness, but it can also increase your sales, it can grow your business, and it can engage your customers. So the first thing, why is marketing so crucial to your success as a business owner? Well, the first thing it does is it gets the word out. If you want your business to be successful, the service or product you're offering must be known so that, uh, so that, so that your potential buyers know where to go. People need to be familiar with who your brand is and they need to talk about it. If your brand is unknown in the community and you don't have any kind of communication with your customers, they won't know anything about you and they certainly won't buy from you. The second thing it does is it builds trust. So remember, building trust is not something that happens overnight. If you think about trust, who do you trust more? Do you trust a friend or do you trust a complete stranger? The more well-known your company becomes, the more people will trust you. The more people that trust you, the more likely they are to buy your products and services. So start your marketing and your for your business soon. And let, the longer you are out there, the more people will become familiar with you and the more they will think about you when they're in the market to buy your product or service. The third thing and the third reason why marketing is so crucial is it helps you really, really understand your customer. So many businesses complain, and I think being in the field that I've been in, I come across this a lot, um, where, they, where they turn around and say, no, I don't want to advertise or market my business because it doesn't work. Okay, but what they don't understand is that they're always there's a customer out there for every business, and it's up to you as a business owner to find those customers and to advertise and market your business on the right platforms that speak to those customers. So, a good marketing campaign will target the right people, and in turn, those customers will find your business. So for that reason, it's really imperative that you, that you have a really good understanding of who your target market is. Who are the people that are most likely to buy from you or buy your product or service? You need to understand everything you can about them. Their demographics, what is their age, what is their gender, what is their income, their psychographics, what is their lifestyle, their interests, their values, um, what are their needs, where will you reach them, where do they live, how does your product or service offer them a solution to their needs? Um, how do you engage with them? And how do you actually get their attention? So it's really, really important to understand your target market before you start marketing anything, because you essentially are speaking to a core group of people that, are the, that have the highest likelihood of buying your product or service. So ultimately, you need to put together a profile of your ideal customer. Remember, not everyone is your ideal customer. You need to understand as much as you can about them in order to be able to communicate with them effectively. You can't be all things to all people. And a lot of people that I find, especially working with small business owners, try and be all things to all people. They, they, you, you actually just can't. Um, you need to make sure that you, you focus in on a niche market and that you understand them really well. And if you speak to them in a personal way, you're more likely to have success with your campaign. Um, marketing can also help with sales. Obviously, um, it helps you increase your sales. Once your product or service or company gets on the radar screen of your prospects, it increases your chances that consumers <coughs> will, will make a purchase. So, and also as awareness becomes reality, new customers start to spread the word, which is what you want. So obviously that helps with increasing your sales. As business owners, we all want more leads. Um, and I'm sure you can all relate to that as business owners, but there are really only three ways to grow your business. The first way is to find more customers and marketing, that is where marketing comes in. It can help you find more customers. It can help you find more of the right customers. 
and it helps you generate more leads. And then obviously when the leads come in, you need to make sure that you're converting them. The second part of it is you need more transactions. So you need to increase the number of times that your customers actually buy from you. So first and foremost, you need more customers. Secondly, you need more transactions. And thirdly, you need to make more profit per sale. So you need to increase the average value that they're spending with you, and you need to, in turn, it will increase your profit margin. So the five ways formula that Action Coach works with actually covers all of these elements uh, really, really well. It looks at the number of leads. We look at the number of leads that, are, that, are, that any business is generating, and we help them with their marketing, whatever their marketing plan is, um, in terms of being able to do that. We look at assisting them with how to convert, sorry, how to convert those customers or those leads that come in, and that will then give them a number of customers. We look at the number of transactions and the average order sale, which will give them the revenue. And we obviously then look at the bottom line, which is about the profit, which is everything a small business should be. So just to give you um, an, an example of this, um, if we just put some numbers to this, if we looked at the number of leads, hypothetically coming into a business, it might be in the region of 4,000. If there was a 25% conversion rate, that, that means that you would end up with approximately 1,000 customers. If those customers, those 1,000 customers were buying from you on average twice over a period of time, and they were spending approximately 100 Rand with you, your revenue would be in the region of 200,000 Rand. If your profit margin was 25%, you would obviously be making a profit of 50,000 for a period of time. What we work very hard at is helping you increase every single one of these elements. And if we just increased it by each element by 10%, if, it was, if we were able to do that in a business, I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything, but the bottom line result of this would mean that your profit margin would increase from 50,000 up to 80,000. If we just in, increased and improved the number of leads coming in, your conversion rate, and your number of transactions, et cetera, by 10%. So that's a 46% increase in your revenue and a massive 61% increase in your profits. And it's all down to, it all starts with marketing. For fun, if we wanted to look at 100%, it would take your profit margin to 1.6 million Rand. So you can see the potential there if we just break everything down into bite-sized chunks, starting off with marketing. So marketing as well, as I say, helps you engage and attract customers. And obviously your target market needs to know what is unique and different about your particular business. So you need to communicate this with your market. You can't just go out there and say, I'm a hardware store and I, I have all the different ranges of different brands on my, on my shelves. You need to try and find something that is unique and different about yourself in order to be able to put it out there. Why should customers or why should prospects come to you as opposed to going to your competitor down the road? Really, really important. And that is one of the reasons that you have to build a strong brand, especially in these uncertain times. So yes, it's important that we socially distance ourselves, but we must not be socially distancing our brands at this time. Um, your brand actually matters now more than ever. And in times of crisis, we've spoken about it before, people quickly turn to those brands that they know, they like, and they trust. And that it's important for businesses who are building themselves a brand reputation so that consumers feel comfortable spending what little they have with you um, at this particular time. So this actually says it all. Silence is not golden. Now is not the time for silence. All businesses have to find ways to communicate with their customers if they are going to stay relevant. So very interestingly, this was another um, study that was done by the IPA, the Institute of Practitioners in Advertising. And they basically saying that advertising cuts could mean an extended recovery period for your business. Um, brands that actually go dark during these times could be facing revenue declines of up to 20 to 30% in 2021 and 2022. So if you have a look at this graph, the blue, the blue line is basically showing a business that has maintained its advertising and marketing budget throughout. Even if they do maintain their advertising and marketing budget throughout, they would still have an approximate one year sales recovery time after a dark period. The green line is showing a business which has cut its budget or advertising and marketing budget in half. 
and then reintroduces it afterwards, that sort of that sort of scenario would probably lead to about a three-year recovery in sales. And then for those businesses that have actually cut their budgets completely during this time and only reintroduce it as the red line, you can see that it can take anything up to five years to sales recovery. So quite scary. It's very, very important. And I know marketing and advertising is probably the first budget that people look to cut during tough times, but it's certainly something that they shouldn't be looking to cut if they can afford to, because it's something that will help them come out a lot stronger after these, after these difficult periods. So remember, branding is a never ending process for your business from the moment you open the doors to decades down the road, every ad, every customer interaction, every visual image will reflect on your brand. So what will your brand look like? after COVID, you need to ask yourself where you're at with that and are you marketing enough and are you doing enough to tell your customers that your doors are still open and that you are there to help and assist them. So just something I wanted to quickly um, take you through, again, coming, coming from my background, I see a lot of small businesses looking at when they do look at doing marketing and advertising, um, they approach it with what we call a sporadic or a call to action type of advertising uh, campaign, where in a period, over a period of a year, um, if this is your timeline and this is your awareness level here, what they do is they run bursts of advertising because they, they believe that that'll be okay. They might run a burst of advertising at the beginning of the year. And sure, when, they, when they're running the advertising, the awareness level goes up. But as soon as they stop advertising, it comes down to almost zero again. And then they might run another little campaign in the middle of the year, and they might run a bigger campaign again towards the end of the year. Although you might get some response um, for running your campaign or running your marketing campaign like this, um, it's not optimal. And it's actually a really, really expensive way to advertise because every time you start advertising again, you have to start from an almost zero base. So what we prefer to recommend um, is you look at a consistent and ongoing way to advertise your brand, to keep it top of mind with your consumers. And it doesn't mean you have to spend more. You just have to consistently be out there throughout the year. And what actually happens is it has a cumulative effect. And what starts to happen is you build yourself what you call a brand equity platform. And people become more familiar with who you are and what you do. So when they are in the market for your product or service, you're the first brand they're gonna think of. And you, you keep your brand top of mind. So brand equity is extremely important for your business. And you need to look at building it and keeping it going. Then when you run a call to action campaign over and above that, it's gonna work so much harder for you. So it's, you're never gonna come back to zero again because you've built this foundation of brand equity. So if you think about it, some of the biggest brands in the world, um, don't ever stop advertising. Everyone knows who Coca-Cola is. Everyone knows who um, First National Bank is. Everyone knows who MTN is. But they continue to advertise because if they stop advertising, they're going to lose this brand equity platform and their competitors will come in and take over. So very, very important to keep your brand equity out there. And as I said, consistency is the key. Um, you need to keep your brand, your brand visible. The last thing about why marketing is crucial to your success, it definitely helps make um, strategic decisions in, in any business. I think as any business owner, we're always confronted with lots of questions. What products do we have to manufacture? How are we going to do this? When are we going to do it? Who are we going to manufacture them for, et cetera? And I think that's where marketing can come in and really, really help you answer those questions and lead you in the right direction. Because any good business should have a good and solid marketing plan. And it should be covering, including all these elements. You need to understand your competitive analysis. What is, what, what is unique and different about you? Why, what is the advantage? Um, what is your pricing strategy? Is it priced at the right target market? Who is your core target market? Um, what your metrics are, what's gonna make sure, what, you know, what are the things you're going to measure to make sure that your marketing works for you or doesn't work for you? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So there's a whole lot of information that goes into a proper and solid marketing plan, which can certainly help you with your business going forward. So you need to clearly identify your core target market, as we've mentioned, and then you need to design products, 
price them right, price them right, distribute them where they're going to be more likely to be bought, and obviously put together a fantastic um, or a very effective media campaign in terms of where you're going to reach these people. So these are the four P's of marketing. Um, they've actually now been extended into seven P's, and I think when last I heard there were 12 P's, which is really interesting. But these are the four basic P's of any marketing campaign. Once you've identified your target market, it's then about working through all these four elements to make sure that you've got a solid one. But very, very importantly, um, whichever template you are using, it's not about putting together a good marketing plan. It's not about you don't, please remember, you don't find customers for your products. You find products for your customers. Okay. So it's the other way around. It's about, it's really about understanding your customers very, very well and then designing products that are going to be fulfill their need or, or, or offer them a solution to whatever their, their pain might be. So remember, you need to understand the purchase funnel and the journey that people go through when they're about to buy a product or service. They first obviously become aware of the fact that they need this product or service. And then they broadly start to consider um, options. You know, who are, the, who are the couple of options, well, not a couple of options, probably a whole lot of options that they could consider for that particular product or service. And then they start to narrow it down and then they actually buy it. And then they become loyal to your product and advocates for your product. And that's what we really, really all want. So it's very important as well from a marketing perspective to understand this journey and to, and to find out and to really understand where building a strong brand comes in. If you have a strong brand for your business and everyone is familiar with it and people know who you are, you will come in right at the top of this buying cycle, which is where you want to be. If you don't have a strong brand and you're only going out and doing those bursts of advertising that I spoke about at odd times during the year, generally you're only coming in at the call to action um, um, sort of level of the, of the, of the actual um, journey. And that's not great because a lot of the time there people are comparing price and, price and it becomes the, the, cheapest, the cheapest option normally wins. So that's not really where you want to be. So building a brand, as we've said, um, is really, really important, more important than now than ever. So you need to tell people that you're open for business, where they can find you, what you have to offer, why it is unique, and why it meets their needs. And, you know, I get a lot of people saying, yeah, I understand that. I do understand that we need to market our business, but what platform must I choose? Um, you know, how am I going to reach my market? And yes, there are so many options. There are options, there's traditional media, there's television, radio, newspapers, magazines, um, all sorts of things. And then there's obviously the digital media side as well. Um, and lots and lots of opportunities there. And there are advantages on both. So there's advantages on traditional media and there's advantages on, on digital media. But either way, the most important thing is to make sure that your medium or the platform that you choose is actually reaching your core customers. Okay, don't merely go for the cheapest option or the one with the highest reach um, because there could be a lot of wastage and you don't always get the return on investment. And that's when people are turning around and they're saying, marketing doesn't work, I'm not getting a response. And you need to, if that's happening to you in, in the current campaigns that you're running, um, perhaps you need to just reassess the platforms that you are on and see whether they actually are the right platforms for the market that you're trying to reach. Um, just quickly to draw an analogy in terms of reaching the right market, I always look at um, the stadium example. Just imagine a person selling hot dogs at a rugby match, um, and we need to decide where they would sell more hot dogs. So the first option is if they stood in the middle of the field at half time, um, well, that would be one option, and everyone came and bought hot dogs. Or well, the second one is where they actually section off a part of the stands and they run up and down the stands selling their hot dogs all through the match. And very interestingly, the second option would result in more sales. And if we ask ourselves why, it's basically because there's more frequency there in a niched market. You're not trying to be all things to all people. You're focusing on a certain segment of the people that are at the rugby game and you actually are going to them. You're focusing on that niche market. So we need to apply the same philosophy in our, in our marketing campaigns, and you need to choose your platforms carefully in accordance with where your core target market um, is, and you need to plan a high-frequency campaign to communicate with them more often. 
don't get caught out by counting the people you reach. Make sure you reach the people who count for your particular brand. So it's much better to focus on a niche market, which potentially has the need for your product or service. Um, you're going to have much more, much more success in that way. So just bottom line to sum it up, um, you know, from a, from a marketing perspective or a marketing strategy, very, very important to understand your target audience and who they are, to understand the products and services that are going to that, that you're going to be selling to these people, to have a strong, strong brand positioning. And as I've mentioned, that's going to be an ongoing, it's an ongoing thing. That's something that you never ever stop. Um, you need to look at where you're going to reach your target markets and put together a proper solid marketing and sales plan. And then you need to look at the timing of that. So the action coach view, remember, is that sales and marketing is an investment, not a cost. And I think a lot of small businesses or just generally businesses look at marketing, sales and marketing as a cost. It really is not. For every cent or rand or dollar that you spend, um, you should be getting more back, a lot more in return. So you need to test and measure absolutely everything in your strategy, every strategy you employ, test and measure. If it's not giving you the response that you need, change it. Um, that's really what you need to be doing. So you need to understand what the actual acquisition cost, how much does it cost you to actually get a, get a new customer on board and how much is the lifetime value of having that customer on board. And you need to try and increase your lifetime value and obviously reduce your acquisition cost. So bottom line, really, it's essential to advertise the right product to the right market at the right price if you want your marketing to work. And as I've said before, people buy from brands they know, they like, and they trust. And one thing is certain, as the world begins to emerge from lockdown, and transparency has never been more important. It's simple. Authenticity breeds trust, and trust breeds customer loyalty. So you need to be speaking to both your today customers and your tomorrow customers. And very interesting, interestingly, if you're only advertising for short bursts of time, you're speaking to possibly only 10% of your potential customers, which leaves 90% of your tomorrow customers not knowing about who you are. So this, again, just speaks very much to the long-term branding campaign that you need, to, you need to do. So invest in your marketing if you can. Um, I know things are difficult and I know times are difficult, but that's why we at Action Coach are doing what we can to assist you during this time. So remember, business only has two functions, marketing and innovation, and make sure you do both really, really well. In the words of Winston Churchill, remember, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And to end off in the spirit of Women's Month, to all those wonderful women out there, invest in yourself first. The rest will follow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a very comprehensive session there. And obviously, as you rightfully said up front, marketing is complicated. The, the biggest corporates in the world have thousands of people working internally on marketing, thousands working externally on marketing, spend billions sometimes, and they still don't have a switch. So you really need to look at this strategically for your business and maybe apply the recruitment that Deborah shared before so that you've actually got the time to do this properly.